when we were young. People are calling this the Emo Fire Festival. Well, that was this last weekend. And me, I was there. I know, crazy, right? Crazy, right? Since I obviously love Live Nation festivals, this is the official When We Were Young 2024 review vlog type thing where I rate the festival experience and the bands that played. Forget every other review of When We Were Young 2024 bands that you've seen so far, okay? Because this is the only one that matters, okay? okay? We made it to the entrance around 10.14 in the morning. And I mean, last year, it literally took like an hour to get into the actual festival, probably. Um, this year, though, we were in by 10.19 a.m. So insane improvement on the line management this year. Literally it took five minutes to get in. And I'm sure having wristbands like every other festival helps. So I'm going to give that a 10 out of 10. I also got there a bit later, so I'm not sure how quick it was for people that got there earlier. But for me, no qualms here, right? No qualms. There weren't really any bands early in the morning that were like must-sees for me. So we had set that time originally to look for merch. Getting festival merch took honestly less than 10 minutes, if even that. Maybe even like 5 minutes. But then came the artist merch. Look at that line. Yeah, no, I'm I'm good off that. We didn't even bother. And the line basically stayed around the same length throughout the entire day. So, yeah. It doesn't make much sense to me that there are four festival merch tents, but only one artist merch tent. So that gets a three out of ten. If you don't want to stay in line for like two hours plus, don't bother getting band merch at all. Actually, you know what? I give it a 2 out of 10 because the festival merch had typos. So 2 out of 10. So now that I had some time to kill after not waiting in line for merch, I was able to go check out some of the earlier bands. Before that, though, we did do some walking around, you know, trying to scope out the place, see what was going on. Um, <laughs> there was this pretty laughable general store, which if you've seen other festivals, they have massive general stores. So this one's laughable. And there was a few of these around, but I mean, come on, look at them. What, what is that? There was also this like little art thing that had some cool photos and like drums and um, some art that even looked AI generated. That was pretty cool. I mean, that's, yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, from here, we went to go check out the main stages and Daisy Grenade was actually playing. I did see a little bit of the Paradox who was also playing early in the day and I had heard of them before but never really listened to their music but they honestly sounded really good so i thought that was at least worth mentioning even though i forgot to film and i'll definitely go check out their music after seeing them for sure but back to daisy grenade i had never heard of them and they were also pretty good to be honest uh, they did have a line in one of their songs that was like eat hot chip and lies so i'll have to give them like seven i'll give them a seven and a half because their vibe was pretty cool um so yeah daisy grenade after catching a bit of them, we actually walked around some more and Alessana was actually playing on the Verizon stage. Now that Verizon stage was packed though, so they didn't get to see too much of them except from like the side. I don't think it's fair for me to give them any rating, but they sounded really good. <laughs> Bathroom review. Okay, the porta potty was absolutely disgusting. And I know I didn't even have the worst one, so I probably can't even show any of this on YouTube. Um, after that, I pretty much exclusively used the real bathrooms because some of the porta potties were genuinely unusable from early in the morning. So I can only imagine at the end of the day, uh, that gets a two out of 10. Or should I say a poo out of 10? Eh? Eh? No? Okay, I'm sorry. We did some lollyganging around and somehow it magically became 1 p.m. But next up we had We The Kings who were playing their self-titled album which I really like and We The Kings in general I really like. But I do hate to say that their singer did not sound that good. I think I saw them in like Warped Tour in 2014 and he also I feel like he didn't sound that good then. Um, the weird thing is though he went on stage for like a few different bands throughout the day. And he sounded good there, so I don't know what happened. I'll give We The Kings like a 6 out of 10. Then we went over to the Alien stage, Lion stage, whatever you want to call it, um, to catch a bit of Say Ocean. They were also performing their self-titled album, and I might get some hate for this, but I don't know Say Ocean that much, especially this album. They sounded really good though, so I'll, I'll give them a solid 8 out of 10.
And while I'm talking about the Aliens Alliance stage, I will say the sound bleeding from the ghost energy stage, which was next to it, was honestly super annoying. That that ghost stage was too damn loud. And this is honestly a common theme for the festival, which I'm sure I'll mention a few times after this. After Say Ocean, the first band I knew I for sure wanted to see was The Devil Wears Prada, who are also at the Verizon stage. Now, let me tell you about the Verizon stage. This stage also did not sound good, at least to me. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it was just me, but the vocals were a bit hard to hear, and the keyboards for the Devil Wears Prada were also hard to hear. Uh, I was wearing earplugs, but I did take them off for like a brief second just to see what it sounded like, and it also sounded pretty bad to me. Like, I really can't fault the band for that, but still, I thought it was worth mentioning. I'll give the Devil Wears Prada a solid 8 out of 10 because their stage presence is insane. Alright, we then made our way back to the main stage and caught the last few songs of Dashboard Confessional. Admittedly, I don't really listen to Dashboard Confessional, but I did know the last few songs that they played, so there's that. I'll give them like a solid 6.5 out of 10, you know. Not really my vibe, but I mean, I'm sure people did love it, so don't hate on me for giving them a 6.5 out of 10. Now, who I really came to see at the main stage was actually Coheed and Cambria. Um, they were performing their album Good Apollo on Burning Star, and... I've seen Coheed before and they don't disappoint and honestly this set was not any exception. Their set was incredible. I'd give them a solid 9 out of 10. Their mic did go out occasionally which sucks but honestly still amazing overall. Not really anything bad to say about them. 9 out of 10. At this point, I think I went to go get food and I spent $20, I think, on a single slice of pizza that had pesto on it. And my damn ass didn't know that pesto could have nuts, which I'm allergic to. So I had to go buy something else and spend even more money. So honestly, I'd give the food a 5 out of 10. It's expensive and honestly, it was whatever, but it's festival food. So I didn't expect much from it to begin with. At least the water wasn't like over 10 bucks i was paying like six dollars to get liquid deaths i think even six dollars for like a gatorade so for a festival unfortunately that is pretty reasonable anyway who's next oh cobra starship this has to be one of the bands that i was most looking forward to seeing uh i loved cobra starship as a kid and them coming back was probably a staple for a lot of people of this festival they really came back with a bang i mean they had a cool set for especially for being like an early day band they even had outfit changes, they had skits. They also brought out Patrick Stump from Fall Out Boy. And also so random, but they brought out Tara Yummy. They also played banger after banger after banger. So I'll give them our first 10 out of 10. And screw it, it'll be 10 snakes out of 10 snakes. We'll, we'll put that on the screen, I think. Hopefully. I somehow ended up on the right side of the main stages during this set. Um, I don't remember how, but it worked out because Simple Plan was the next band up. Simple Plan, I had really high expectations for because last year they were probably my favorite band of the festival. I cried a little bit to them, which I'm ashamed to say. Actually, you know what? I'm not ashamed to say it. I cried a little bit to them last year. And this year, um, they did not disappoint. They were playing their album No Pads, No Helmets, uh, Just Balls. <laughs> And that album, at least to me, is a perfect album. They even played the song Grow Up, which is my favorite Simple Plan song, mostly because of uh, Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure, the video game. And they brought out Scooby-Doo's when they played the theme song, as per usual. But um, Simple Plan gets uh, 12 Scooby Snacks out of 10. Unfortunately, after Simple Plan, I caught a bit of Taking Back Sunday. Honestly, it was so bad that I didn't even take a single video or photo. Uh, I hate to talk negative about them, but damn. They should probably, you know, stop touring for a little bit. And uh, he should probably try to take care of his voice. Maybe take some vocal lessons because I feel like 
probably can get his voice back, but it was such a hard watch and a very hard listen. Taking Back Sunday gets a negative 100,000 out of 10. Yeah, they were awful. Now that atrocity out of the way, um, we went over to the other side of the festival grounds. Uh, I'll show you how much we walked later on, but we were able to catch a bit of Silverstein. Now, I really wanted to see Silverstein, but unfortunately I was only able to catch a bit of their set. Um, but even that little bit that I saw, it was insanely good. But again, that ghost stage leading into the Alliance, 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 whatever stage is a bit of a vibe killer. But even with that, I'll give Silverstein a good 9 out of 10. Well, back to the other side of the damn festival grounds. Next up was The Used. They were playing their album in love and death and also to me that is a perfect album so i was really looking forward to them this set too is also really nice because we were able to just like sit on the grass and chill while watching the youth play a perfect album that was kind of perfect this might have been just me but the bass was insanely loud like unbearably loud though so i'll give them an 8 out of 10 uh, I can't think of any item for this rating, so it's just an 8 out of 10. But yeah, mostly because of that bass, man. It was it was hurting my ears, and I could just feel it too much. Now, staying on the same side of the main stages, next up was Pierce the Veil. I've seen Pierce the Veil like a million times before, so I didn't care to be that close for their set, but... They were playing their album Collide with the Sky. Honestly, this set was really good and even better than I was expecting. They also brought out people like Jason Butler from Let Live, Fever 333, um, Kellen Quinn from Sleeping with Sirens, and even Jenna McDougal from Tonight Alive. Jenna McDougal? McDougal? Yeah, um, so that was pretty sick. Definitely like the people they would bring out when this album first came out. The only thing that I will dock some points for is not playing props and mayhem in full and doing like a stripped down version of it for like a minute um because low-key that's kind of my favorite song on that album so i'll give them a good eight out of ten but let's go back to the ghost energy stage next all right i might have to go through some of these a bit faster just to save you guys some time um, next up, we have New Found Glory, who was also a must-see for me because they were playing their album Sticks and Stones. And I saw them also last year, and they were amazing last year. And this year, they also did not disappoint. Honestly, nothing bad to say. 10 out of 10. So 5 plus 5 for New Found Glory. 10 out of 10. Perfect score. What can I say? They, nothing bad. Now back to the main stages. We then saw A Day to Remember, who were playing their album Homesick, another banger of an album. A Day to Remember was one of the few bands on the festival that I've never seen before somehow, even though I used to go to Warp Tour. I don't know how, I just never saw them. And honestly, they were better than I thought. They sounded so good and also played banger after banger. Uh, their stage setup was cool. I don't know, it was just perfect overall. They also brought out the vocalist for The Devil Wears Prada, so I'd give them another 10 out of 10. Call me the opposite of Anthony Fantano. I feel like I'm handing out 10s too easily. Um, maybe I should switch up the criteria a little bit. But whoever the next band is, is getting a 0 out of 10. Okay, I don't care who it is. You're getting a 0. Let's see who it is. Ah, <laughs> next is Fall Out Boy. Um, Fall Out Boy wasn't doing like a specific album, but they were kind of doing like the Taylor Swift eras type beat. They played lots of bangers though and had a cool stage design. They also had like little videos playing in between, but... Their pyro was absolutely insane. Uh, every time their pyro went off, it made me flinch. Like, every single time. And they also had these flames that would go off every now and then that, bro, I was, I was dumb far. Like, I was dumb far from the stage. And it felt so hot every time those flames went off. So, I can only imagine how hot it felt up close. Like, those people are probably missing eyebrows at this point. <laughs> if anyone watching was close to the stage for Fall Out Boy, let me know how hot in a like, in the comments, tell me how hot it was, because, like I said, I was super far, and it felt so hot. But Fall Out Boy didn't play a little less 16 Candles, so that was a little bit disappointing. It's just crazy, though. Fall Out Boy was my first ever concert, and 
Seeing them now as an adult was pretty cool, but also made me feel pretty old. I won't give him a zero, like I said, but I'll give him a nice eight out of 10. All right, so we're close to being done. Are you still with me? Oh, no? I mean, that's okay. I'm, I'm not all there either, but next we go back to the ghost stage, actually, to catch the end of Sleeping With Sirens. I only caught a few songs, but they even played If I'm James Dean, you RJ Hepburn, which was really cool, especially because they didn't play that on the first day, so no, definitely, definitely a uh, positive. Um, I'll give him a nice 9 out of 10. All right, after Sleeping With Sirens, on the same stage, we had Escape The Fate. Now, Escape The Fate was a band I was extremely excited to see because they were playing their album, This War Is Ours, which is so damn good. It's an album I listened to like nonstop as a kid and even till this day. So for me, they were a must-see band. Because they played at the same time as the headliners, the crowds kind of started to thin out, especially once My Chemical Romance started playing, like tons of people were leaving. But the vibes for this set were so good. Because they did play at the same time as My Chemical Romance, uh, everyone who stayed for Escape the Fate, you could tell just really loved that album and was singing every song at the top of their lungs. So it was such a vibe. Like everyone was so cool, so nice. The mosh pit was super fun and no one was getting hurt. Definitely one of my favorite sets of the day, if not my favorite set of the day, to be honest. They get they get a strong 12 out of 10. And that's, and that's being hard on them. Honestly, 12 is on the low side, all right? They could have gotten 100 out of 10. Okay, we made it to the end of the bands, all right? We're almost done with the video. Last, we headed over back to the main stage to catch the rest of My Chemical Romance. I've seen My Chemical Romance before, so I didn't mind missing a bit of their set. I don't know how though, Gerard Way is honestly aging backwards, and even though they did have to transpose some of their songs because, you know, they're older now, he can't sing in the same register, they still sounded so good. I've seen a lot of people saying that they wish their stage design was better, especially because they were after Fall Out Boy who had a crazy stage design, but I don't care too much about that. I feel like Stage design can definitely add to a band set, but I don't feel like it could take away, you know? I don't know, maybe just me. The band did seem really into it. Gerard Way was really into character. You know, he was saying crazy things, doing some crazy laughs. He even said Sunday was better than Saturday. So, I mean, I mean, maybe he was lying, who knows? I'll pretend like he wasn't, all right? But yeah, Fire Ass set, they get another 10 out of 10 for me. And that's it we left the festival and overall it was a really good time one thing i did think was weird about the festival was having bands play at the same time as the headliners especially my chemical romance the main headliner i don't think any band should be playing at the same time as them because i saw like pretty girls make graves performing at the verizon stage and while i'm sure like super huge fans of pretty girls make graves went over to their set instead of my chemical romance I feel like there was probably a lot of people that wish they could have seen Pretty Girls make graves, but because of that conflict of them playing at the same time as MCR, they chose MCR over them. And I don't feel like that's good, especially because like the Ghost stage and the Alien stage were done earlier than the Verizon stage. It didn't make much sense to me. I feel like the headliner should just be the headliner, but I don't know. That's just me. A few bands I wish I did see but wasn't able to were Red Jumps to Apparatus. Chiodos and Boys Like Girls. One band I wish I didn't see at all was Taking Back Sunday. So uh, you can't really blame me there. I'm sure anyone who's seen them before understands. And this, wherever it is on the screen, is how many steps and miles I walked that day. Um, for any non Americans, that's like kilometers, but like converted to cheeseburgers or something. I'm not sure. But yeah, quite a long and tiring day. Overall, though, this year was a lot better than last year and while i did have like some issues i try to keep this video a bit more positive because i feel like a lot of my videos are negative 
And I didn't want to do that with this one. If you guys went to the festival, what was your favorite set of the day? If you didn't go to the festival, do you agree with my ratings just from what I showed here? Um, or even if you did go to the festival, did you agree with my ratings? Was I too nice? Was I too mean? I don't know. Um, don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe on the video. If you like and subscribe, I will perform next year at When We Were Young. Not any music or anything. I'll just be like on stage standing there. And they'll probably have to drag me off. All right, that's it. Bye-bye.